The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the June 12th, the wonderful Wednesday edition of today's Trader's Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right, when you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find a gift. In every set of circumstance that life is gonna toss at us. Now today you and I, we're gonna go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence, but even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question and you can't call in, we've got your back. You can send me an email. Send that off early, if you will. Steve at TFN.com is the email address. And in that subject heading, please put radio show question. Of course, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on wonderful Wednesday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. So we start our day here with all the U.S. indices, all the U.S. indices trading to the upside. Dow's up 175, S&P 65, NASDAQ 100, 284, Russell's up 57, Semi's 156, Trendy's up 234, New York Stock Exchange is up 170 bucks. Leading our charge to the upside out here, dollar-wise, MicroStrategy. 116 points. Booking Holdings up 93. Casey's General Store 48. Asmill Holdings 33. Lamb Research 32. To the downside, it's Elevance Health off about 11 bucks, followed by McKesson Corp right behind it at 1058. ZKH Group down seven bucks. Accenture down five. Marathon Petroleum down five as well. So we got some movers and we've got some shakers. We got gold trade up 17 bucks. Silver's up 82 cents. Uh, Lights Recruit is up 13 pennies. Natural Gas is off 4 cents. 30-year Treasury up uh, 1 and, uh, well, basically nearly 1 and, uh, one point and 21 ticks. Print out at 119.12. So let's begin our day. So let's just start over here real quickly. Let's take a look at the uh, New York Stock Exchange, that advanced client uh, oscillator out here. And it's trying to get to that zero level, still below it. And with prices below that level, believe it or not, I know you're not going to believe what I say, but it still says that sellers are the ones in control of the market. So is this just a counter trend move? Um, is this something that uh, is going to reverse when Powell delivers his uh, message, his interest rate decision and his conference at 2 and 2.30 today? I don't know the answer to that. But right now, you do have a New York Stock Exchange that is voting for the idea that this is just a counter trend move out there. Uh, against that idea is the spot volatility, which we, talked, uh, we looked at yesterday. What we saw was maybe be a rising bottoms pattern out there, a series of higher lows. Well, that got uh, negated today. So that's no longer in place out here. Uh, we remain below the 50-day exponential moving average, 1355 is that number. As long as price remains below that, this says that buyers are the ones that have the edge. So we don't have uniformity there. We don't have a unanimous agreement, really, is what I should say. And uh, that's the way that it is. Now, what else do we want to take a look at? Well, I'm just curious, where is price trade in relationship to apogee and perigee so gold got above the perigee pivot point and now it's back below that so that's kind of interesting um yeah the nq is way above it so is the es mini okay we're going to just simply move either you although however the u.s dollar index is back below its perigee pivot point at 104.56 so this suggests that it could pull back further and again that pullback further level would be the bottom of its profile that would be the the, the next target to the downside 103.68 but really it's the weekly profile that price has been consolidating between so if price were to close below 103.91 then we'd see a move back to 103.23 out there now ordinary 
ordinarily, somebody would say, I could even say, that uh, you've got the U.S. dollar pulling back, so gold should continue to roar and to rally. Ah, uh, shoot, it's not set up. I'll try to set that up during the uh, breakout there if I remember to do that. What I will share with you is if you take a look at a three-day correlation average, that is just simply not the case. Since the uh, April time frame, it's a 50, it's a coin toss out there. So I don't think we can use the U.S. dollar index, not at this moment in time, as a gauge to what metals might do out there. Okay, so let's go ahead and move over to um, to some of our, our white background charts so we can start ripping apart this market. So first, let's take a look at the uh, daily equity future contracts. We'll take a look at all four. I'm going to move off of uh, this set of charts here and take a look at this. Now, the big move that we see inside the marketplace has come from the Russell 2000. The Russell 2000, two days ago, confirmed a Gartley buy pattern. It reconfirmed that yesterday uh, with another bullish hammer candle. So we had two bullish hammer candles. And boy, has it taken off. One big move to the upside. Now, there is a new profile that is attempting to form. And 2075 is a resistance level. We are trading above that right now. If it closes above that, it should go target its um, a high out here. The uh, high that I'm referring to is from back on May 15th, and that's up at the 2132 level. The confirmation of that would be a close above 2094.50 today. So that's the number to be watching, I would say, at day's end, 2094.50. But you do have that Gartley buy pattern. If we take a look at the ES and the NQ out here, uh, do we have any kind of a topping signal? Um, I would say the answer to that is potentially. If we take a look at the NQ, it has now gotten into wave number seven. That is letter G. That's a very small portion of the Chapman wave. It's a very cool portion of the Chapman wave, and you should really understand that uh, tool, that pattern out there. So in order for this to uh, form some type of uh, wave number seven, letter G top out there, you need to see a lower high. So we wouldn't know until the end of the day tomorrow whether or not that is a pattern. Short of that, price above all resistance levels, and therefore what the NQ is doing is trading an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. Its initial 1-1 price projection is 2151 out there. So no other top for the ES Mini on the daily time frame other than that wave number seven pattern. If we take a look at the ES Mini out here, I've got it in wave number six. So we don't have the similar tap topping pattern out there. Uh, we are in bar number seven. It does say, I don't think we were in bar number seven on the uh, NQ. Where are we? Let me see. Bar number six today. So the uh, ES Mini could potentially form a TD9 count top between tomorrow, Thursday, and Monday of next week. The ES Mini also traded an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. No resistance that I can see. 53, um, 5610 is its one to one A to B equals CD price projection level. Inside the uh, Dow, the interesting thing here, nice rally, right? But that rally has stalled. And where do we have price? Basically sitting right at that oscillator and change line, which it has been unable to take out over the last many sessions out there. What that says, it come days in, is where does price close? Does price close above 38,939? That's the number right now. That may change by a buck or two in either direction out there. Uh, so I would add a couple of bucks there. If price does close above that, well, then all of a sudden the level of resistance that has been working will have failed. And if we take a look, and that would suggest that the Dow would likely move higher. There is no profile resistance in front of it. So its price target would be 40,034. So that's what's going on. We take a look at the daily equity future contracts. We come back from this break. We had a question from yesterday to take a look at the top eight instruments inside the NDX 100. So let's start that process as soon as we get back from this break. Steve Rowe, TFN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. 
Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters Letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. So before we dive into the individual stocks, Microsoft, Apple, NVIDIA, Amazon, Meta, Broadcom, Google, and Costco out there, we're taking a look at – here's the four charts, basically, that represent the NASDAQ 100. you got the future contract on the left. As we said, you're in wave number seven. That's a potential topping signal out there. We don't have that. We take a look at the cash indice out there. So mm – -hmm. Is that going to be a top? I don't know. If we take a look at the Qs, also not a similar pattern to the uh, NQ out there. <coughs> Let's hope this doesn't start. Um, as we take a look at those three instruments, you can see we're at new all-time highs. We are not a new all-time high with regard to the equal weighted ETF. What does that tell us? That tells us the real trouble in the system is on not the top 10 instruments, the top eight instruments, but it is below the surface out there. And therefore, and the reason to go take a look at these top eight instruments out here is because if they top, then all of a sudden the entire uh, indice should go ahead and flop. So let's go ahead. So and we have that same situation, quite frankly, inside the ES Mini. ES Mini is actually a little bit worse. You can see we're not even anywhere near the RSPs all time high. That's equal weight uh, ETF for that versus where we're at inside the S&P 500, which, by the way, we don't have any kind of a topping signal for the cash indice out there, nor do we really have it for the ES Mini or the S or the SPY itself out there. And here on the very right hand side is the RSP, the equal weight. And you can see. So this is just suggesting really potential trouble out there, kind of like what the New York Stock Exchange advanced client oscillator. So I want to make sure that we covered that out there. It's not like it's smooth sailing to the upside. It just says, be careful. Is that be careful? Something that transpires today at uh, 2 o'clock or later? I don't know the answer to that question, but certainly we'll stay tuned. So let's go take a look at what's going on inside of the uh, uh, the top 10 instruments. We'll start with Microsoft. Now, what I'm going to do here, I was originally, I've got a screen that I can pull up all eight at one time. But quite frankly, with the moves out here, I think we need to understand what's going on in a weekly and a monthly time frame to get a better picture. So with regard to Microsoft out here, uh, you've got a B point that's being taken, that's being tested today, could be taken out. Let's go take a look at what our cursor 
uh, shows us here. It's taking a, it's trading above, which would be the B point, the swing point of May 23rd out there. And that high is at 433.60. So a close above that would uh, trigger that A to B equals CD pattern. The volume on that trading day was 17.2 million shares. Yesterday, you were moving up into it with a total of 14 million shares. So far today, in a little less than two hours of trading, 5 million. So you've got about 15 million shares, give or take, going into 17 million shares. So it's going to be, a potentially going to be, similar type volume out there. Now, if we take a look at um, uh, Microsoft out here, much like the uh, NQ, we do have wave number seven signal that is out there. So is it going to be the A to B equal CD pattern to the upside? Um, I don't know the answer to that question, but certainly if we do close above that uh, B point on a daily basis, and again, that level is going to be at 433.60, and we do it with more than 17 million shares, that'll set up a gigantic A to B equal CD pattern to the upside. When I say gigantic, I don't know if it's gigantic, but it's a pretty large one. So let's actually go ahead and draw that in here. So uh, we'll start, I'll just simply go ahead and draw in the A to B line, and then what we'll do is we'll move that over to the C point out here. We're going to try to do that. There we go. And so that's going to give us just a, an approximation for you folks. That one-to-one -one objective would be at about the 449 level. We can see that price on the left-hand side of that C to D leg. This would suggest as long as that pattern remains out there uh, that this would likely do more than a one-to-one -one area. So that's about the 450 level uh, inside of uh, Microsoft. If we take a look at the weekly time frame, price is trading above right now the top of its bear structured profile. It doesn't matter where it's at at 1122 on Wednesday. It matters where it's at on Friday at 4 p.m. And if price closed above 430.82 on a weekly time frame, this is adding to the idea of what we just took a look at on the uh, daily time frame that this wants to move higher. The monthly is going to form or likely going to form bar number eight of a TD9 count at the end of the month. That says you could get a top between this month and the next two out there. Um, so, you know, no top yet. And price is trading above the top of its profile. Happens to line up with the weekly profile at 430.82. So that's what's going on. We take a look at Microsoft out there. Basically, all signals at this stage here point to being bullish, other than that wave seven top on the daily time frame. If we look at Apple, Apple having this another stellar day today. Uh, if we take a look at Apple, yesterday it negated its Rhodes Mintum indicator uh, topping pattern out there. The weekly time frame, a big strong move. The monthly time frame, I don't see any kind of a topping signal out here to speak of. Um, let's take a look at the weekly chart. See what we've got going on in a weekly chart. So the weekly chart is attempting to take out a weekly swing point from December 15th. That swing point has 379 million shares. So far in two days and a little bit, a couple hours of trading, we're 343 million shares taking on 379 million shares. Holy shnikes out here. G-Man is the one, I believe, that is the one that is in Apple. And so G-Man, this is saying stay put. Boy, if we take a look at uh, this out here, well, this is a really large A to B equals CD pattern. So let's just simply go ahead and try to move this over to that C point. This is a weekly chart that we're taking a look at out here. So the weekly chart, and look at how price is along that left-hand side of that C to D leg. So this is going to give us a weekly A to B equal CD price projection initial towards a $240 level. But much like we took a look at a Microsoft, it's trading way, this Apple's even stronger. Uh, as far as the left-hand side of that C to D leg, this really suggests doing more than a one-to-one -one A to B equal CD pattern out there. So we're above all kinds of resistance out here inside of Apple without any kind of topping pattern that I see at the moment. Let's go take a look at what's going on. In, uh, and this is the problem here with NVIDIA is there's still got a bad tick out there, or at least I believe it is a bad tick. So I've got to sort of ignore that uh, trading day. But what I can say, so the problem is, is that this day here, this being June 10th, that happens to be the day following bar number uh, nine out there. So that high, and I wish I knew what that high was, that could be, if that high is above the high of bar number eight, which was June 6th, and that high is at 125.59 out there, Right now, that is that pattern is being negated, but I really need to know where the high is on that trading session of June 10th. Uh, so I got two different trading systems. They both come up with this, what I, I'm referring to as a bad tick. I know some of the other dentists use other systems out there. What do you guys have for the high of that day? Do you, do you guys have this bad tick information out there? I just need to remember to get investigated, um, and it'll be easier once I get rid of this uh, 
virus that I've got. In any event out there, uh, let's assume at this stage here that price is negating that TD9 count top out there. Well, then NVIDIA is looking very bullish as well. Uh, are there resistance levels? I don't see one on the weekly time frame, and I don't see one on the monthly time frame. However, on a monthly time frame, you're in bar number eight. So much like I think we looked at Apple, that says you could get a top between this week, and this week, this month, and the next two out there. Um, so that's what I see with regard to NVIDIA. Really got to get that chart cleaned up. I know it was a 10 for one split. But there's no reason for it to have traded up to that level out there. So I appreciate that one, one ninety five, ninety five. Absolutely got that ten for one split. But it didn't trade. I don't believe it traded from the uh, from this for this distance here, one one seventeen oh one up to one ninety five, ninety five out there. Uh, so Ed Thinkorswim's got that same bad tick. So it's got to be investigated. Somebody's got to figure that out because it's a. Uh, quite frankly, it's screwing up the charts out there. But let's move on. Let's go take a look at Amazon. I will start this here. We'll take a look at this one. Get back to this break. On a daily time frame, price trade above resistance levels out here. Wants to go tackle its TD9 count breakdown level, 189.89. Same thing. We trade above resistance on the weekly time frame. Well, I take that back. It does have a, a topping pattern, Roachman Dominicator top, that uh, was from May 10th. So that's a key high. We'll finish up uh, Amazon as soon as we get back from this. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento on Friday, June 14th and Friday, June 28th this month for his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LarryJune24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Trader's Edge is brought to you by Direction's Daily Leveraged and Inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. 
Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, uh, folks. Uh, let's finish off Amazon here, and then we'll go to we got a caller on the line, Roger in Boulder. Uh, when we take a look at Amazon, we're referring to the weekly chart. So right now, on a weekly basis, price is trading into its swing point from May the 10th. That's also a resist resistance level, but it's the high of that swing point. That is resistance, 191.70. That had a volume of 172 million shares so far in about uh, – about uh, you know almost two and a half uh, days, we're at 73 million. So we're moving into that with lighter volume. Nonetheless, if you close inside it, that means a close above 184.80. It increased the odds that you may go test that high. Certainly 189.59 this game. So I'd say where Amazon is headed to on a weekly basis between 189.60 ish and uh, 191.70. And we take a look at the monthly time frame chart out here. Um, it looks like there was a small A to B equal CD pattern that was uh, that could that generated a sell the D point pattern back here on the uh, trading session of uh, April April 2024. Now, if price closes above that high and that high is 189.77, that pattern would get negated. So that's what we're looking at. When we take a look at Amazon. Let's go out to uh, Boulder, Colorado, and speak with uh, Roger. Roger, thanks for calling and thanks for holding. How are you today? Oh, wonderful. Thanks for taking my call, and thanks sure. for all your help. Uh, my pleasure, as always. I appreciate so, it. Yeah. So I was and, looking at the Amazon, um, I'm sorry, uh, the NVIDIA, and yeah. um, the I, we all have bad ticks, and I went and, and corrected it on Thinkorswim, and you can manually correct that, and it was like a, the peak yesterday was uh, 122.87, and uh, today, uh, the high is 126.88, which, which surpasses June 6 high. Sure. So, but it was really so that that uh, what so Basil system, thankfully, I think it's Trade Station. Um, he has what looks like probably the accurate data. So, thank you very much, Mr. Chapman. And he's got the high on the trading day of June 10th at 123.10. So 123.10, uh, so it's really still the, the key high out here is going to be that June 6 high because that's the high of the TD9 count pattern. So what I would be watching for out here is if price is able to close above 125.59 today, that negates that signal. And that would suggest, at least on the daily time frame, that we should continue to move higher. The reason is because it would negate its TD9 count top, it would be trading above profile resistance at 123.73 and trading above its green oscillator and change line. So let me give you and everybody else who's got those bad ticks out here. We're going to go with Basil's numbers, and he's got it. And this is for the this is for the trading session of two days ago, June the tenth. So what he's got is one twenty three ten at the high. He's got one twenty thirty seven as the open, one seventeen oh one as the low, and the close was one seventeen seventy nine. So I'll do that. I, I I think I can also change it on my chart. I have never had to do that. I usually just call folks and they go ahead and change it through their system out there. Um, and I'm going to pass this information that Basil's given me on to uh, them. But still, uh, the key out here that I'd be watching for, Roger, is uh, does price close above 125.59? If it does, then all systems are go, uh, continuation to the upside. Does Now, I don't know if that answered a question for you or created a question for nope. you. No, that's, nope. that's, that's fine. No, that actually, uh, the other question I had was uh, about the Marvell. And okay. it's really um, not, it's meandering, and, and I, I was tempted to get out of it several times. And, um, you know, I just don't see any, any movement on, uh, on, on, on Marvell. Sure. Is this a short-term, long-term trade? What, what's your, it's what's your... A, intermediate. It's basically I've had it uh, for about uh, four or five months. Okay, so from let's say from an intermediate standpoint, uh, there is a new weekly profile that formed last week. So I can give you new support and resistance areas. The support level is going to be at 6506. And the resistance is going to be up at the 7342 level. Now, this week, we've gotten pretty close to the 7342. The actual high so far for the week is 7297. We can see on a weekly basis, price hit, hit resistance. That was its oscillator and change line. I'm going to open this chart up further to get a better take of what's going on. So on Marvell, on a weekly basis, back in March, March 8th to be specific, 
uh, it formed a Roadsman to Mitigator Top. And it did that because price of the RSI was stretched. Uh, we got a bearish shooting star candle. What that did was it took price back to support. Now, in this instance here, support was um, really in the range of about 6094 to uh, 6303. That was a bearish structured profile that price was trading above for quite a while out there. And that would have said that any move to the downside, if it was just a counter trend move, would have found support at that uh, 6109 ish area out there. And more than did that. So what you've got though now, so I would say that the move to the downside could be over because you had the top. Price went to support, support held, and now what you've got is a consolidation with inside that weekly. So I don't see a reason for you to sell necessarily. If price were to close below 6506, that could be telling us something different out there. The daily time frame uh, did form, so we had the weekly that formed a, uh, a top, the daily time frame formed a top on May 28th, Roger, and that was a TD9 count top. Nice. And that took price right. back to support, it actually broke support for one session that was on June the 4th. The support level was its breakout level of 68.18. But you and I, we've got this requirement of at least two days. We don't like one hit wonders. We wanna see consistency out there. And in fact, that very next trading session, meaning June the 5th, price got back up above that level. You got uh, below it just slightly on June 6th and you were below it up for a bit on June 7th as well, but we're back above that level. So the next resistance level inside, so I'm gonna say that support basically held inside of Marvell on the daily time frame. And that move to the downside quarter should be uh, over. However, there's a new profile that formed four or five trading sessions ago, and that was above price. And that's kind of a bearish message. It tells us about overhead supply. And so, but you're, we're trading above the green oscillator and change line. I believe Marvell's going to go tackle 73.50. And if it can close above 73.50, you'll have a battle at 75.97 and 78.44. But more importantly, I think on the daily time frame, what this is telling us, potentially telling us right now, is that support held. And so no reason to get out uh, at, at that. Uh, um, the, also no reason to exit your long position. And on a monthly time frame chart, price remains above profile and this green oscillator and change line. So on an even longer picture, Marvell looks pretty good. Does that help you out at all? Or is there oh, something else that you oh, were looking definitely. at? No, okay, okay. definitely. I re I'm really thankful. And, and we all appreciate all, all you do for us. Well, um, I was uh, thinking back to this um, NVIDIA. You yes. know, I'm thinking the, some of the Dow Jones members going to change, and I can't imagine the uh, NVIDIA not to be part of a Dow Jones. Yeah. And that would could generate additional buying power because all these funds they have to buy. Sure, sure. Yeah, so I, so I don't know. I don't know. I, I haven't read anything on that. That doesn't mean it's not happening or anything. I, I just haven't read anything. But, um, you know, when so when that day happens, before we'll know about it beforehand. And let's come back and take a look at that. Hey, we're about to go to a hard breakout here. Rogers, anything else that I can do for you? You've done a great job. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. You bet. You have a wonderful day. That's Roger in Boulder, Colorado. We'll be right back. spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archive live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits.
In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets, with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. Let's switch things up just a tad. We'll try to get back to those uh, uh, next uh, four uh, top instruments inside the NDX 100. Uh, in the meantime, let's take a look at VFC. This is a VFC Corp. I, a VF Corp out there. And uh, Dan, sorry. Well, at least we know the profiles work, huh? You and I. So uh, earlier this morning, uh, Dan is is in this uh, for the long term out here, and it looked like this thing was breaking out. It was trading above its uh, swing point uh, from back on uh, June the third. That would be a B point of an A to B equals CD pattern. That swing point had volume of 12.5 million shares. So so far, in a little over two hours of trading, we're at two million shares. So this is moving into that swing point with light volume. That's the first thing. Second thing is the sellers, which sit at 14.04, are certainly active. So you've got to get a close. Above 1404, you really only need to close above, no, 1404. You'd like to see it close above 1404 with more than 13 million shares because that would then give you a confirmed A to B equals CD pattern of the upside. But if it does that and it gets above 1404, um, Dan, what you've got is resist at 1456. And that, that for between 1456 and 1589, uh, that could be where um, we put the fastened seatbelt sign on because that is a bearish structured sell zone out there, 1456 and 1589. And then if you can get above that, you'd think that maybe the work is over, but it's not because you'd have additional battles those additional battles would be up at the 1852 to 2027 level so that's what's going on we take a look at vfc um let's take a, a peek at uh from dan who wants to take a look at gold as well as the gdx let's move over to i've got a set of charts that will let us take a look at gold silver and the gdx so let's uh, pop those up on our screen. Let's take a look at daily and weekly time frame. So what do we know about gold? There's really a couple different things that we know about gold. First, there's a new profile that is uh, trying to form today. Now, this profile has shifted a couple of times during the morning. It's remaining as is right now. It's a bullish structured profile, and it has support at um, – Adano at the 2314. Well, it's really support between right now 2314 and 2335. That's the buy zone. Resistance is up at 2386.20 out there, um, which is basically where just is a slight tick above the prior profile that was in place out there. Now, because this profile wraps around the prior one, that tells us about a long term. That tells us about a consolidation pattern that is likely forming out there. To take a look at that, I've, so I'm going to do one other thing out here. You can sort of see it here on the edge. Well, no, I'll tell you what, I can do it from here. And that is I'm just going to open up the weekly time frame chart. 
I mean, just pull this back a little bit just to make it look a little bit easier. So here you can see on a weekly time frame chart, gold had a TD9 count top. Uh, that resistance level is up at the 2471.30 level. It also formed a Roachman Dome indicator top. Not that two tops are better than one. It's just it's got two different tops. Each of those tops has now taken price back to support. Now, this is a weekly buy zone. That's between 2299 and 2368. Price so far this week got down to a low of 230450 versus 2299. That's enough of a test for Stevie. But if gold is really going to now, what I also want to share with you is that we can see that the gold has been trading in a sideways consolidation back since the April time frame. And it's basically between the profile levels up there. 2299 to 2471. So the daily gave us a message of a consolidation pattern. And we take a look at the weekly chart. It's got that same message out there. What you're looking for in gold today is you'd like to see this uh, you know, so resistance up at 2368.70. Um, if price can close above that, you should see a move up to the top of its profile, daily profile 2386.20. If price were to close above that, then we had higher. Let's take a look at the GDX. The GDX yesterday confirmed a buy the D point pattern, a Gartley buy pattern. And why did it do that? Because it formed a bullish hammer candle. Now what we've got out here, well, there was a new profile earlier. Maybe I don't have that setting on my system. Let me just check that out real quickly here. And um, it has boxes on bar clothes. Okay, sorry about that. So let's get that new profile up here inside of the GDX. And this is also a bullish structured daily profile, Dano. So your support or your buy zone is between 3361 and 3415. Resistance is up at 3522. That's the top of that daily profile. Uh, now, this profile is formed below the prior profile. So this says from a trend standpoint, the trend may be to the downside. However, I'm going to say what offsets that is the mere fact that you've got a confirmed Gertley buy pattern. But resistance is resistance. It's brand new. This profile is brand new out there. So I'd watch that 3361 to the bottom and 3522 level to the top. So hope that provides you with the info. By the way, and with, with regard to silver, which had a confirmed weekly Roachman Dome indicator top, price got back, tested, and rejected that green out southern change line. So the weekly signal is neutral out there as we speak right now. So, Dan, I hope that helped you out with regard to the GDX gold. And you got a little extra out there, which was hi-ho silver. Let's go take a look at um, what do we got next out here. I'll go back to VFC. Let's take a look at um, NIO. This is for GTE. Then we'll take a look at AMD. And then if I don't have any other requests that I see, we'll go right back to those uh, uh, NDX 100 charts out there. So in the case of NEO, you've got an A to B equals CD to the downside pattern. Looks like price has already attained that one to one level. But let's just check on that and make sure. Let's move that to A to B point over to the C level. And uh, yes, well, it's, it's basically it's making that move today or very close to it. So what you'd be watching for inside of NEO is some type of bullish reversal candle. If you were to get a bullish reversal candle, that would confirm a guard buy pattern for the daily time frame the weekly time frame just simply shows that price is trading with inside its profile but below the bottom uh, uh, below the center of its profile it's a bearish structured profile and a close on friday below 469 would suggest a move to the 388 to 418 level uh, now look if you get a bullish reversal candle on the daily time frame then those bets are called off and that would then suggest at least a rally rally up to 491 so that's what i see when i take a look at uh, neo let's take a look at uh, amd this is for snp inside the tiger's den and we take a look at AMD. This chart here will populate momentarily. What do we have here? We've got price that closed below. It's a bullish structure daily profile for two sessions in a row. It's trying to get back inside that profile. What you really need to see here now, um, SNP, is a... Uh, I think that's who, who asked for AMD. You really want to see a close above 163.44 to suggest that any rally is not just a counter trend rally out there. If we look at the weekly time frame chart, you have a you also have a, a bearish structured weekly profile. This suggests 164.20 is the number that price needs to close below to suggest a move down to 145.77. Now the other thing you can take a look at here, S and um, S&P is uh, look at how that weekly 
Oscillator and change line has acted as resistance. Of course, it's lined up with the top of that weekly profile out there. So the weekly suggests caution. The daily suggests caution as well. And the uh, monthly says, I don't know what you guys are talking about. Well, really, we do know what it's talking about. The monthly chart formed a Roachman Dominicator top four months ago, but price pulled back and has tested for three solid months in a row now, has tested that green oscillator and change line. Its signal is neutral. Should price rally, it has a resistance level at 200.46, the top of its profile. So that's what I see when I take a look at AMD, and that was for McGuppy. If we go take a look at uh, what's going on inside of Facebook out here, Meta, just to get back to the next uh, number five inside that waiting. You're in bar number seven to the upside. I don't see any kind of a topping pattern on the daily time frame. Let me open up this chart, see if that is in fact the case. Yeah, I don't see anything out there for the daily time frame for us to worry about. The weekly time frame, though, says I found resistance today at 5, 12, 10 or thereabouts. That's the weekly oscillator and change line. We'll be right back. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, uh, folks. So, I hey, knock on wood, we got through this show without a coughing attack. That's progress out there. So maybe I am on the mend out there. That would be a beautiful thing. So we're taking a look at the uh, intraday charts here for the NQ. And the question I had for myself is, is there any kind of a tell out here? How is the market going to respond to uh, uh, Chair Powell telling us that interest rates aren't going to be reduced? They aren't going to be reduced today or anytime soon out here. When we take a look at the NQ, we don't have a tell as of yet. Uh, the only 
tops that we've got are in a 10 to 15 minute basis. I'd hate to make you know my uh, daily decisions only based upon that. Now they have roads mentum indicator tops with no levels of support yet having failed. But the first level that's up that's going to be tested out here comes from the 10 minute chart. And the 10 minute chart shows uh, profile support at 19,505. If you had two consecutive closes below that, we're headed lower. Headed lower to where? Well, the next level of support. That's going to show up on the 15 minute time frame chart. And the 15 minute time frame chart has support at 19,460. And below that, it would have support at 19,374. Now, ordinarily, on days like today, you see a, a market that is rallying or you, a market that is moving lower. You typically see it try to get back to neutral or towards neutral. Rule. So it wouldn't be surprising if we so if we get that close on that 10 minute base below profile support, it just kind of adds the idea of what would be normal. I wouldn't say that's a necessarily a top of significance. It could be, but I wouldn't say that um, out there because the normal the normal move is uh, as we get towards two o'clock that things sort of come back in. I'm not saying that today we're going to get to the flat line out there, but uh, further retracement uh, would not be out of the question. But no other topping patterns or signals at this moment in time for the NQ. I'll put up the ES Mini. I don't know if this is going to populate in time before the show is over, but I'll at least try to get this up on our screen for us. Here, we'll see what we've got there. Looks like a 10 and 15 minute Roach Mint Indicator top. Uh, no levels of support uh, being busted through. Um, that that would require quite a move to the downside, so I won't go there. I do have a wave number seven top on the 30 minute time frame and price testing the key level support at 54.30. So I would watch 54.32 for the 30 minute ES mini and if price were to close below that, we probably see 5420. Folks, stay tuned for all the great programming. I'll be back with you tomorrow on Terrific Thursday. Please have a wonderful Wednesday and stay safe out there. Take care.